parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, this week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we rebook Raw from our friend in London. We talk about Big Show's saddest moments, and we talk about Twitter's most interesting moments from last night, and all that, and so much more. And we have a lot of people joining us in the Hangouts. Uh, stay tuned, Mayhem Show. This edition of Wrestling Mayhem Show is brought to you by... Fleshlights. Head on over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, look for that banner, and click on it. You'll know which one. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's a Wrestling Mayhem Show 385 coming to the mayhem studios here in pittsburgh pa we're ready to talk wrestling and have some fun here for the next hour or so uh with me uh from uh coming to us from a uh, tin can and string uh from across the river is papa of the lb dj lunchbox on twitter how you doing sir hi everybody it's uh it's me it's papa lunchbox sorg is right i uh i am underground and also underwater things are a little tight right now i had some uh i was hit with an ion cannon uh, because the mole people are getting advanced. Uh, I killed all of them, uh, but they did a lot of damage. I built a laptop out of sticks and mud and the still-beating heart of a, of a mole person. Um, so you'll, you'll got to forgive me if the, if the quality is not very good. My black magic is very rusty. <laughs> Excellent. Also coming at us, uh, at us from a place well-known for its black magic in San Antonio, Texas, it's uh, Amen at amen 2 please on the Twitters. Uh, San Antonio, Texas, the number one black magic capital in the world. So yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. You may LB may need to come down this way and and freshen up on his black magic knowledge. Yes, and also coming at us, another uh, proprietor of the dark arts is Jessica Leg Kick TKO from Alabama. Hello, everyone. I don't have an intro beyond that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> You're new to this. Uh, if you didn't uh, check out the second half of last week's show, uh, Jessica actually joined us uh, for that and has been joining us uh, uh, pretty regularly on the wrap-ups and the after shows uh, uh, throughout the week as well, right? Yeah, I watch TNA because I have a brain sickness. <laughs> so, right. And I noticed, and, and some may be interested, you have a, uh, a, a passing fancy for MMA too, right? I'm seeing from Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Time, That's so. kind of where the... Twitter handle comes from. Awesome. So go follow her if you want to get some uh, talk some MMA uh, as well. Uh, so let's get into it again. Hey, this is the Mayhem Show, uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check us out at uh, the email address. Good times. <laughs> Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Drop us a line at that phone number, 412-206-WMS0. Uh, Drop us a line on uh, Twitter. Uh, no, you can find us on Twitter, Stitcher, YouTube, or... Uh, it, it, Check us out on the Twitters at Mayhem Show on Google Plus and Facebook. And, of course, the great Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show is where a lot of the the, uh, the shenanigans are happening these days. So uh, be sure to join that as well. And, of course, you can join us live here every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can watch the stream. You can converse with the tens and tens of people in there uh, and have a good time and influence the show. And we might have an interactive piece here later on, uh, some more people joining us if all the tech works out so we'll see how that goes uh, until then uh let's go and start the show the way we know how uh by hearing from the fans and letting them spark the initial discussions here let's get into the fan mail and we have a very very special one uh lb i, I think this is your territory right i mean it's old school enough you're the only one that was here i i think that this is something that we should share as a group oh okay Tag in, tag out, so on and so forth. So okay. I'll kick things off, and then we'll uh, I'll tag somebody. Okay? okay, okay. All right. Hey guys, some thoughts. This is. Do you want to do the theme song? It's Vimail. Uh, Vimail. 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 <laughs> I don't think either one of us sang it. I think it was. It was I, I wasn't here for Vimail. Okay. 
You can't blame me. Hey, it's Vim. Well, Vim was with us like from the beginning. He's our, our, our fan from London. He uh, may also may or may not also be the Terminator, for those that don't know. Uh, but he chimes oh, in every every few months when something significant happens that, that, that has him thinking about wrestling, right? Yes. So, here we go. Hey, guys. Some thoughts. He's also British, but I'm not going to do the accent. This is a unique time in the history of the WWE. In all other eras, the superstars on top have been the pinnacle of their powers and have been the superpowers of the company. Now we have the wrestlers being superseded by gods who have superpowers and are the force of the industry, meaning those who are holding the belts in the standards are just bit part players. Think about it. Triple H, The Rock, The Undertaker, and of course Vince. In other eras, there was no one that stood above Stone Cold. The Rock, Hogan, Brett. This made those stars the show, and I understand why. By creating a layer on top, you can have better control of the product, but that takes away from the actual thing that we enjoy, which is the wrestling. When, when done well, there is, uh, there is little better than a written story that invests you in the characters in their struggle, where you actually care about what happens to them, but having another layer on top of that dilutes and make, makes a joke of the story. Oh, excuse me. I apologize. I had Indian for dinner. Um, and I'm going to tag out to WrestleFan. <laughs> okay. Tag. I really feel bad for the big show. Basically being told that the era of the angry giant is over and you are now the big baby. How can, he t how can we take him seriously now? He's brilliant in his roles, but this story fucking sucks. What is really frustrating is that simple stories are being done very well, such as the Wyatt family and also the CM Punk angle. But again, why is the IC champion there? That is supposed to be the best of the second tier of talent. Uh, I'll do another one. So with frustration effectively vented, I, with the following paragraph, will stimulate the best mayhem show in the way that only I can. Who wants to tag? Tag. All right. Uh, the WWE is an entity that we all have great affection for, but since but I feel each of us could create a version of the WWE that is better, and we could get in there three months from where we are now. Uh, but remember that the tendency for fantasy booking is to book to an ending, but the WWE has no ending, so there should be a progression from there. Let me show you how to play the game. Ha <laughs> ha. Um... So I, you know, I think he's right because I think I think a lot of times when we look at how things go, we want to see the re resolution and the path to the resolution we want personally. Uh, from when I see a lot of people kind of complaining about like where we are now, especially with the Daniel Bryan situation. Back to the Vim Mail. Uh, Bryan beats Randy, and then again in a three-way with Randy and Triple H, he becomes he overcomes with Randy turning on Triple H, uh, with the motivation being Triple. Triple H said that the WWE title was his property, and Randy lost it to the dwarf, causing Triple H to be abusive to Randy, who snaps. Uh, this leads to Triple H Orton feud with uh, Steph leaving Triple H for the man for a man with integrity. CM Punk gets his hands on Heyman. That gives him a release to pursue the title uh, from Brian until such time as Heyman starts with another monster to attack Punk. Uh, feud with Curtis Axel and Antonio Cesaro. I, 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 how did you, why do you pronounce it like that? Um, <laughs> With S's, uh, which, which will have spectacular matches back and forth, leading to jealousy with Jack Swagger, and these are a great set of matches, propelling one of them to the main event picture. The tag teams, the Usos, have match after match with the primetime players, with splitting the series, and eventually leading to a triangle match with the Shield. The U.S. Championship starts to be contested with Kofi and Jack Swagger. Swagger comes up short. Kofi loses out to Dean Ambrose after interference, but he also raises his stock. White family repackaging Kane and make him relevant until he comes back and goes through uh, Ryback and also gets him to join the family too. Over to you guys, Vim. Um, wow, I don't think we can come in anything as as far sighted. Um, yeah. <laughs> that he described. Yeah, th th those are pretty good. Um, I, I I don't see a problem with any of those, and I think I, I honestly think the thing that's going to come out of the corporation back and forth is going to be less logical than what we got there, and that's a problem. I, I, we, we you got to think about these plans 
always switch because of something happening backstage, whether it be an injury in the case of John Cena, whether it be, um, you know, maybe, you know, some uh, Randy Orton gets his third strike in the middle of this entire thing, you know, uh, which, you know, by the way, could lead to the why he's been in such a nowhere position for how long um, was, you know, proving that he can still be a player and not screw up again. Um, wow, that'd be really crappy if this is the time he gets caught again, right? So <laughs> Yeah. Um, he, he'd be done. Like, I think he'd be wholesale done at that point. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. We don't really fancy book all that much here, do we? I mean, I mean, it's, it's hard to, I, I don't think, especially in this situation, I think there's a lot of ways they can go with it and, and not, there's not one specific perfect way. I don't think. And I'm more, I, and I mentioned last night, uh, in the wrap up for raw, I, I like that this is kind of the off season as in there's no clear path from here to WrestleMania. Right. right. We, I mean, we, I'm not even sure if we're really like, we would love to see Brian punk. We would love to see, or we're hearing about maybe a Vince and Triple H kind of situation, but we have really no idea how we're going to get from A to D, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And it really is up in the air for the next couple months. Like, I kind of love that post-SummerSlam through to TLC because it's just a, anything could happen. You know, that's when CM Punk got the belt and ended up having it for over a year. You know, was at, I think, Survivor Series against Del Rio. Um, yeah. This is where they get to experiment a little bit and hopefully not get into uh, autopilot mode, which I think we've seen that a lot, too, sometimes. Um, but the best stuff comes when they really kind of go out on a limb in this era. Uh, and then that's when, like, you know, somebody drops a title so we can have a rock match or whatever uh, more towards WrestleMania. But we'll see. Um, we'll, we'll see where we go from there. So, yeah, definitely. All right, next up, we got one from our uh, one of our new writers, Dustin. He's been having some great questions the last few weeks. Uh, he says, uh, I asked a few weeks ago how you they would flip, uh, sorry, flip Vince McMahon uh, face in this situation with the new corporation. I still stand behind the fact that this, is, this, I believe, will be the final conclusion leading to WrestleMania 30. Trips is gutting for all the power in the company, and Vince won't realize until it's too late to stop him. Trips will be wrestling at WrestleMania 30, and uh, this angle is how I see him getting there. You know, I, I, on that, because we haven't seen Vince for the last two weeks, have we? For one thing. We have not. Um, and I also go around to, like, like we go from, like, we go from Cena... He's saying, I don't like how Cena walks around like he owns the company. Then you have Triple H, who did a power move on Vince, you know, you know, a heel face kind of flipped a year ago. Um, I think that's the perfect motivation for, hey, you usurped me once. You're going to do it again. I'm not sure about what you're, what you're doing here. They already had, you know, disagreements on what's best, a quote unquote, but about what's best for business. Um, I, I, I really kind of think something could happen from that. And I have no problem with that being a WrestleMania match. Like, hopefully not Vince himself. Hopefully it is, like, a I don't think order. he can be Vince himself. No, it, it, hopefully, maybe maybe Vince being, brings back Brock Lesnar or something crazy like that, you know? Mm. Or, or, uh, or, uh... uh yeah, I, re- I, re- I really want to know the Triple H Brock Lesnar match. Exactly. I really want exactly, that. Exactly, right? But no, uh, I, I, I could see that happening. My problem is... Uh, one of the minor faults, I think, of the storyline is that they still haven't established, like, the power structure, like, what the roles of Triple H, Vince, and Stephanie are. Like, are they supposed to be on, like, an equal playing field? Like, do they all share, like, the same amount of power? Mm-hmm. Or is it more, like, is Vince still on top? Or I mean, yeah, because we saw, we saw, like, Vicky scared of all three of them. Yeah, so right? it's like, I, 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 they need to define that. They need to make that clear cut as this... This is the structure. This is how basically mm-hmm. the the lineup goes. Exactly. All right. I don't think we'll do that. To be honest, I think it's just going to be, you know, generic, vague. Oh, I'm in a position of power, and I'm in a position of power, and then we fight for the power. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so to the questions, one: How awesome is it that Sammy Callahan is now named Solomon Crow? Answer. More awesome than you can explain in a one-hour podcast. Don't try. Pretty much. Have we seen him? Yep. Has, he, has he premiered on NXT yet? I'm a few weeks. Uh, he's still. done house shows. He's, he's done, done house, shows. house shows. So we'll see what they got. Great. I, I can't wait to see what they do. I hope it's as as, as I mean, he, he did great stuff. Uh, he was through last year with IWC, uh, involved with the super indie picture, uh, uh, all the way through to the you know filling in for facade. Mm-hmm. 
uh, at the end of the year for winner takes all. Um, I, I can't wait to see what he does with WWE. I hope he's going to be one of those different guys. I know he's way smaller than a lot of those guys in there. Um, so, so we'll see. I, he could be an interesting fit for maybe even the Wyatt family, you know, with, with kind of his style. Um, mm. Number two, with a lot of talks behind Hogan's recent comments of being handcuffed by Dixie, that sentence alone just scarred me. Do you agree or disagree with the Hogan stand of saying basically that Dixie hasn't given Bischoff and Hogan the creative freedom and funding that they have asked for? What do you think as a watcher of uh, TNA there, Eamon? <laughs> there there you go. <laughs> what about you, yeah, Jess? <laughs> I completely disagree. I mean, you, you saw what happened as soon as they came in. They got rid of the, the six sides. They brought in all the terrible people Hogan is friends with, you know, like the Nasty Boys and Bubba the Love Sponge. Like, she's yeah. given him more than enough rope to hang himself, and yeah. he's done it like 10, 15 times. Yeah. And he's just terrible. Well, remember how many of his buddies came over in WCW? I mean, it was like, hey, here's Brutus. Hey, here's Jim. Yeah. Hey, here's Hacksaw. You know, it's, it was ridiculous. Here's my cousin Horace. <laughs> exactly. Um, it's is that what we want? We want money to bring Horace back? Is that is that what what we do? You know, or mouth mouth of the south? Or maybe he's trying to wrestle some of these guys away from uh, Horace uh, Hogan was the only the, successful Hogan. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're a string. You're a Horace guy. I'm a Horace guy. You're a Horace Not Hogan a big guy. Brooker Nick fan. I'm no, no, Horace, fan. Horace Hogan. <laughs> that's the guy that got all the talent in that family. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Uh, LB, uh, you, I mean, you've seen you've seen some of the fallout over the last year uh, with TNA and, and the Hogan Bischoff uh, uh, era. Uh, what, what do you think about? Do uh, you, you think Hogan Bischoff just need more money and, and say so? No, I look at it this way: when a ship is sinking, uh, everybody wants to blame everybody else. Everybody wants to blame the captain, and the captain wants to blame the cook. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all falling apart. It's all coming apart at the seams and nobody wants to be held responsible because they all think, you know, we have to have careers after this. Yeah. So yeah. now they start pointing fingers before it all completely falls apart. Yeah, remember, this your, is the guy that would catch a toy made me drive this phone like shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and remember, I mean, the classic story is Hogan would always book himself off of TV uh, during like the NBA finals come back when the r ratings would spike anyways. Oh, um, yeah. And, and, and yeah. you know, blame blame him not being there. You know, the, yeah, the Hogan, Hogan's had a history of having a, of a man baby syndrome. So. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the smartest man in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> hey. At making know. Hulk Hogan money. Uh, making yeah. Hulk Hogan money, but he makes Ric Flair mistakes with his women. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like in wrestling, he's smart about manipulating things, but outside of it, terrible. Not with the ladies and the kids. I wonder. I wonder how good he is now, though. Like I knew he was good at that back in the day. Hey, when, you know, better can... father, uh, Hulk Hogan or Ozzy Osbourne? Ozzy Osbourne. Probably Ozzy Osbourne. I, 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 I haven't followed Ozzy Osbourne news. I, uh, wrestle fan, when you were probably five, uh, there was this show called The Osbournes that followed Ozzy <laughs> oh, no, I watched and the Sharon. And, okay. There was a lot of swearing, so you might have been not allowed past your bedtime to see it. Oh, that's bad, you know. Did, did his kids ever kill somebody with vehicular manslaughter? Or not kill someone, but paralyze them? Um, I don't know. Last I knew, the son was climbing mountains and the daughter was on Cosmo. Well, good That's for him. And, good and there's the third one that was never on TV, so she is probably fine. That was a crazy because there's like, there's a third one? Is there a third Hogan kid we don't know about? Horace. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Horace was a long lost child. Uh, number three, which is more important to you as a fan? Wrestling ability in the ring or talking skills on the mic? I can't. I, I I think have it's a whole both, package, right? Both, in an ideal world, I would definitely say the whole package. If we're looking at the question of which do you weigh is more important, I think wrestling ability has to come first. Yeah. Because I think, yeah. I, think, I think you have to be – I mean, if you're a great talker and a great wrestler, that's great. But if you can only talk in that and can't wrestle, like that's you, – your chances are sort of limited. Mm. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of great wrestlers that are successful that are not that great talkers. So, mm. Jess, I mean, I would I would rather watch Dean Malenko than you know Hulk Hogan or, or anyone else that is known more for their mic skills. So, yeah, I, I go yeah. for the athletic wrestling kind of side of that equation. What about you, Albie? Uh, 
talkers, uh, if you can only talk and can't really wrestle, you become, uh, 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 fuck, what's his name? Uh, Armando, Armando Estrada. He could wrestle. He was Aww. a wrestler, but he was a better talker. So they put him on the mic, and that was the end of it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and you got to think about it. We, we, uh, if you value one or the over the other, you have some place to go. You know, um, whether it be, hey, I'll go check out NXT because I want to see more wrestling, or, or even SmackDown is kind of the more wrestling show. We have ROH. We have you know the pure wrestling uh, feds out there, uh, and especially there's some on TV now of, of all those of those types. So, um, yeah, you're gonna find a mix of different people with different uh, uh, abilities. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's good. There's a place for everybody. Even though, you know, everybody wants to get to the big dance with WWE. And it's great that I think we have a great generation of guys coming in that came up as workers, quote unquote. Um, and they're kind of up in that quality, you know, and showing, hey, wrestling can matter. And wrestling can tell a really good story uh, with it. Um, oh, my God. We got French in this next email. Still in the middle of an email. Yeah. What's that? I said, we've really gone off the rails. We're still in the middle of an email. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 that, that was it. Oh, personally, I go for the ingering stuff, uh, but I can see how people can be more attracted to the character uh, than the athlete. Regards, Dustin. Thank you very much. Great questions. Great questions. Um, so who knows French? I can try. Oh, this is going to be tremendous. <laughs> I can do okay. the French part for you. This is, this is from Sierra, who's not French. Uh, but he just wants to mess with us. You okay. don't know that. Mayhem, mayhem, mayhem. Jimmy Apercero Duke... Duque. What? Oh, I think that was really cool. That was good. That was, is it okay? okay. That was all right. Jimmy Apercero. Jimmy Apercero. Jimmy Apercero. Jimmy Apercero. That's the only one I got. Okay. I don't Ciro know where the, what the, what's up with the K, but that's... that's... Well, Zero 2K. Oh. Uh, my... Zero 2K. Just, this yes, is accurate. Indeed. Uh, I don't want to talk about Raw because nothing has really been happening, but NXT, on the other hand, and before Old Man Riz that only watches shows on TV asks what NXT is, it's a show for free on Hulu and has better stories and matches than Raw or SmackDown. Anyways, I like this guy. Bo Dallas is the greatest heel in the history of the universe, and while it may not be official, it is amazing how he plays it out. Also, I want to point out, you guys remember what used to be a big deal about Night of Champions? Yeah. And now the Punk Axel match fucks that up? This is as bad as TNA giving Sting a title shot for being a good student. God. 10 zero points, whoever gets the intro reference, Riz. Don't even try. It's an NXT person. Uh, I, mm. I don't know the current NXT person. That would. I, I, know, I know the reference later on. Okay. Uh, later, mijos. Whoa. Uh, zero out. P.S. In homage to my newest, greatest heel stable in wrestling, suck our dicks. Wait, who's I'll, this? I'll, we'll get to that later in the ending minute. Oh, okay. Uh, and he follows it with, I just wanted to let all of you know, Ciro has left the building. In case you didn't get those reference, watch NXT, fuckheads. <laughs> um, yeah, hey, yo, Night, of Chan- Night of Champions has been ruined for years with non-title matches. This is not the first I time. I don't know. I don't know. It has I don't been. Think it There's it. definitely been non-title matches on that show. No, there has been, but I don't think that they ruined the card. Were on the line. It didn't matter if there was non-title matches as long as all the other titles were on the line. Which they weren't always. Yeah, yeah. We would always miss an IC belt or a tag belt when we had two tag belts, or they throw it on the pre-show or something. I don't think so. So I know. I think. Yeah, if you look at that Wikipedia, so. All right. Uh, next up, hey Should Jessica, I read my this own is email? yours. Um, yes, let us know your thoughts. If you want us to attempt the uh, attempt the uh, uh, poetry, uh, we can do that. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's whatever anyone wants to try. Okay. Yeah, I can. Your email. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't catch that. You kind of cut out with your mole man computer. <laughs> I said, I said for you to read your email. I will read my email then. Dear The Wrestling Mayhem Show, I'm looking forward to my letter grade or star rating or performance review or whatever for my inaugural stint as replacement co-host of The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Don't know if you're going to get into that or if I should keep oh, going. Uh, a plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we invited you back. We put you back on the straw <laughs> so I think that counts. I know, 
I know a lot of people are anticipating a Rhodes family reunion and beatdown of the new corporate empire. But I've got to be honest, I don't care to see Dusty Rhodes waddle in the ring, hit some bionic elbows, and then waddle back out. I'd rather they play into his status on NXT and bring up someone handpicked by Big Dust. I'm thinking Bo Jangles Dallas. Uh, per the request of Mad Mike during our TNA hangout slash wrap-up, here's The Ballad of Alan Jones, a strong, emotionally powerful country ballad. It should feature plenty of twang when recited. Steel guitar is encouraged, but not mandatory. Uh, my steel guitar is in the shop. Uh, <laughs> LB, you want a half and half this? Uh, okay. Uh, I know how to do twang. <laughs> I love that L- LB knows how to do twang. I'm from the South. I do not know how to do twang. <laughs> you haven't seen where he's from. Yeah, that's why. Uh, am I starting? Yeah, go for it. All right. Set the tone for me. <laughs> uh, it, it's going to take me a second to get into the accent. There was a poor boy named Alan. Alan Jones. Born in Gainesville, Georgia, he was o- always alone. Lived in a rusted out single wide, struggling and just trying to survive. His mama and daddy worked three jobs each, but they still couldn't make ends meet. They had to get out because he wanted a better life. But poor Alan Jones barely knew how to read and write. Sorry? Oh, is it going to me? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, I might have to work myself into this one. So he took I, mean, I can to give the- it a shot if anyone doesn't want to try. No, that's not fair. You're from Alabama. Um, <laughs> so it took to the mats. No, no, that's not right. So, so no, my twang's my twang's broken. Go ahead, Justin. Look, look, so he took to, to the mats and he learned a trade. Took up wrestling and got himself paid. Started working for Jeff and Jerry Jarrett. Thought he could go far based off his merit. It's just too bad that poor Alan didn't know all they wanted were guys from Vince's big show. He still tried his best, and he got real good. Didn't help he had charisma like a plank of wood. Thought he was alone, but that just wasn't the case. Claire Lynch gave him solace, if only a taste. This fake baby didn't last, it just wasn't to be. Driven off by Chris Daniels and Frankie. So Alan got sad, and he covered his head. Dressed in black like, like he's mourning the dead. Didn't get cheer, said there was no one. Heart got broke, and the tears were flowing. But then the main event mafia came a-calling. Looked like he was back. No point in stalling. But the next week, he turned him down and said, I hate this job with a mighty big frown. Now, poor Alan's stuck in a tight spot. If he stays in TNA, he'll be left to rot. But if he goes up to Stanford, it ain't much better. Losing to Bo Dallas, a lady taking his name's letters. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. Brief note, I could, I could write terrible couplets about AJ Styles indefinitely. Well, that's enough out of me. Thanks. Leg kick, TKO. <laughs> the poetry, the painful poetry of TNA Maybe. and Impact Wrestling. Thank you. All right, one more. LB, this uh, supposedly is go- going to you. Uh, not one more. Not one like more, two more. more, because one came in. Two more. Oh, man, we have so many. Oh, I see. This is this is a return. There's there's the return, and then there's one for Eamon, and then there's one. All right, go ahead. All right. Is this one I used to read in the in the one voice? I think yeah. it's just, yeah. Get your ghetto right, on. Right. <clears throat> welcome, welcome back to the shitty last minute but long overdue email. I know it's been a while, but to be honest, last year's road to WrestleMania was fucking terrible. Who wanted to see Rock versus Cena two title shot? Hell, who wanted to see Rock? God damn it, sword! get your fucking cursor. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm following it, too. <laughs> Sorg wants to read, too. Uh, hell, who wanted to see Rock versus Cena 1? Once in a lifetime, my ass. Anyone who... Hmm? Anyone give a shit about anything? Not CM Punk Undertaker? Hey, WWE... You gave the internet darlings a Ziggler world title cash-in. Why not at Mania? I thought the expensive pay-per-view was all about moments. But he cashes it in the next night. WWE, fuck what you said. 
chest. Sorry, I had to get that off my chest. What brought me back to wrestling? It sure as hell ain't TNA. Truth be told, the new man Helmsley era snatched me back into wrestling. One, it's pushing d into great fucking underdog gold chase, which will do wonders until WWE drops the ball in the long run. A la CM Punk versus Triple H in the WWE office. Two, Ziggler and the rest of the targets get story and TV time. If I was WWE, I'd have Triple H help Sandow cash in his title and add the world title to his stable. Then I'd D. Brian Punk go after the big belts and have the USPS or primetime players and a mid-carder go after the Shields belts. Has anyone else noticed how perfect Orton's role would have been for a heel Cena and why the corporation is so heavily avoiding CM Punk? That's all for tonight. Sorry, no big songs or backgrounds. And if you've got a problem with that, fuck what you say. <laughs> awesome. Back to Eamon. That was hot. Uh, we got an email from the Riz because Riz decided to send an email. WMS! Is the one, the only, the man who gets all of the b- baloney. Okay. Okay, that rhymes. That guy, not here, so you're stuck with me, Riz. Raw was slightly okay. If you're not a fan of what WWE is doing with Daniel Bryan, you're falling right into the palms of WWE. They did want you to hate Orton. They want you to hate The Shield. They want you to hate everything associated with this. You'll fall into the hands of WWE management. TNA sucked. What? You want more? Fuck you. Both of my observations were made this week on WIS's post-show hangout extravaganza and such. That was the end of the sentence, sorry. I don't want to get into all that shit. You want, to, you want that you know where to find it. Fuck it. I'm going to jerk off and big show cry until I'm on the show again. <laughs> until <laughs> next time, various uh, symbols and letters. Riz! <laughs> anyway, so big show cry is now a verb? Big show cry, yes. Mm. And that is in the form of a verb. All right, back to LB for the last one, I think. Yes. Now, here, now here's the thing. Um, I've been saying I'm going to do this in an, a new accent each week. I don't know what accent to use. I think next week I'm going to hold a straw poll and let people vote on which accent. Okay. But I need you guys to help me pick an accent this week. I'm thinking maybe Italian. <laughs> Italian's always a good but choice. But like Mario Italian. <laughs> yeah, like Mario Santino Italian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just because of it, it's a me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a me. Okay. Hey, hey. It's a me. It's a me. It's a, it's big pippy ski for me. For me. Uh, equal spend of the motherfucking year. No, I'm just back to the old one. <laughs> You're about to get trees trailing back. Uh, uh, all right, let me try. All right. Ho, ho, ho. What is the deal, Mayhem Crew? That's French. See, I can't be French either. Go it for just it. goes back just go for into it. my. Uh, Randy Orton standing tall at the end of Raw, like three weeks in a row. Let's hope that the pay-per-view isn't the same. Cody got... Uh, see, I'm just back to the... <laughs> you know what? The Southern worked really well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do Southern this week. Cody got fired. Damn, <laughs> home, that's harsh before the marriage, eh? <laughs> the Canadian. Does it have to be like sl- like slow Southern? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah, why don't you add uh, add a little bit meth to your Southern? Meth? A little bit of meth? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I know how to do that. <laughs> Cody got hard. DBS he quits WWE and decides not to. Re- not to resign. Good for him. Resign. He is rated, if you ask me. Bray Wyatt is amazing. Corporate taking over. Cena is gone. Enjoy six to nine months. Cena free. Questions this week. 
Is there going to be a union faction? Let's hope not. But some needs to help Brian. If could pick a faction from past or present to help Brian, who would it be? It can be anywhere, not just WWE. Nation of Domination, Ron Simmons, Godfather, D-Lo, Rock and D-Brian, and of course, Mark Henry, just this right just so owing for Brian. It works, right? Kind of. Other question for NXT watchers. Who's coming to the roster next? Sami Zayn, Xavier Woods, Pac, or whatever his name is, or who do you think? <laughs> Till next time, it's been me. It's been me. It's at Big PPC. Fan of the motherfucking year. See from <laughs> my ass. Whatever that is. Uh, 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 factions. I was going the brood. Hmm. Why, why, why not? Why not? Uh, well, I, I actually like his idea of the nation of domination. I don't know why, like, I guess they would play on the fact that the McMahons hate black people. I... <laughs> <laughs> what did I hear? Our truth is on the cover of uh, Hell in a Cell? Yeah, that's just a cover what? up. What? It's what? It's a cover up. Cover up? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Them, them black people. They oh. got the storyline correctly, Sorg. Got it. But we'll see where uh, our truth gets worked in by by, by then. Uh, what do you think, LB? Uh, I don't know. I think it would be cool to to see like an old indie faction come in and uh, and help him out. Like uh, I don't know why I keep thinking of the Rottweilers. Okay. But I can't think. I, there's probably a more appropriate faction. I just can't think of it. Or maybe like the Kings of Wrestling. I, yeah, I was going to say yeah, like yeah, Team Kings Uppercut. Of- just uh, just add William Regal. There you go. Maybe instead of instead of Dave Taylor, or, or you know, keep him too. But you know, yeah, there bring you in Squire Dave. Taylor. Let's bring in the just Blue like Bloods. Yeah. You know, or uh, or obviously the new main event mafia because you need rampage jackson to back you up obviously mma is the way to go right all right guys that's the email but first uh, uh, one more question we one, have more, one question. more question oh the nxt thing i don't know sammy zane's i have again a couple weeks behind but sammy zane only seems like the only one that, that's really he's early though he i would really definitely think, dallas. i would definitely Bo dallas Bo dallas Bo dallas Bo really? dallas is another one because oh, oh. Bo dallas is weirdly amazing <laughs> Weirdly um, amazing. I'm also hoping, and it's a long shot, but I would love a Tyler Breeze appearance. That would be fun. Also new, oh. but already got your attention, right? Well, not really new. He's Mike Dalton, and he's been there for a long time. Okay. <laughs> but he got a new gimmick. My God, when is SJK coming up? Corey Graves. <laughs> SJK. Uh, I mean, he's staying to Allen. Hey. Huh? What's that, LB? I, I said SJK. I don't. I don't know if he's ready. I just know it is a thing to say. Yeah, I mean, I think he's he's been a long time, right? I know, like, supposedly Hero Castro Zono has been kind of uh, uh, downplayed a bit down there. So, I mean, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I think they told him to hit the gym or something. So. What's that? Is that LB? I said apparently he needs, like, 20 pounds and he'll be good. Yeah. Um, so with that, LB, tell us about a fine affiliate we have here on the show this week. Uh, okay, uh, I can do that. Um, sorry, I didn't write it beforehand. I keep thinking of commercials. Time to write them down. All right, folks. It's your Papa Lunchbox. That time of the week when we talk about the most taboo of subjects, masturbation. That's right, folks. We know you're going to do it. You know what? There's no shame in it. We want to help you. Not like that. We want you to head on over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Click on the best looking banner we have. You'll know the one when you see it. It'll take you to the website for the one and only Fleshlight. It is just a cavalcade of pleasure (laughs) at the Fleshlight website. Anything you could possibly want. Uh, Don't like girls? That's no problem. We have got you covered. Something for couples? Got that covered as well. Porn? Nailed it. It's all over the place. And, of course, the world-famous Fleshlight. You can design your own. How many websites can say that? None. Oh, wait. Except for the one. That's right, Fleshlight. Head over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Look on the best-looking banner we have. And tell them DJ Lunchbox sent you. All right. And now over to Eamon for the Indie Minute. 
Yay, perfect trans- transition. Pornography and now independent professional wrestling. I love it. Uh, it's uh, time, both both involve a sense of danger. <laughs> a sense of danger? Is that what comes with pornography? I haven't learned that yet. You will. You're in college. <laughs> yeah, eventually. Uh, yeah, so it's the uh, Indie Minute for this week. Let's talk about independent wrestling. More specifically, let's talk about indie wrestling that I was a part about because I'm going to be that asshole. Um, <laughs> Good, I usually for am. Yeah, uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling had their big event this past weekend in Austin, Texas, uh, that I got to be a part of. It was a great, great time. Really fun show. Uh, we did see a, a bit bigger, a uh, little bit bigger turnout than we had last show, so that's always good. It looks like we're sort of uh, uh, making some progress a bit. Uh, a lot of great action. Uh, really stacked lineup, top to bottom. Uh, there was a couple people new in the area that debuted that uh, really impressed, and and they did a great job. Uh, one of the matches that definitely stole the show was the match between uh, Scott Summers and front of the Wrestling Mayhem show, Ray Rowe. Uh, they tore each other apart. Uh, it was a very brutal, uh, very intense matchup. Uh, also, credit has to be go, go to uh, front of the Wrestling Mayhem show, Ricky Starks, who I feel, I feel was the real MVP of the night, competing uh, in two matches, pulling double duty for the night, and both of them great matches, uh, one against Barrett Brown, the other against Sean Bex. Um, it, it was definitely a really fun show to be a part of. Uh, it was a great learning experience. Again, I'm, I'm very blessed and honored to be working with such great people. Uh, and I'm very excited for our next event coming up next month. Uh, we already know one of the matches that will be announced, and that's the final semifinal match in the road to crowning our first champion. Uh, it's going to be Scott Summers, Ricky Starks, and Jordan Jensen in a three-way. The winner of that will join Davey Vega and one man Mike Dell. And then the winner of that three-way will become our first Inspire Pro Champion. So there's big stuff happening for the company. Uh, if you want to check us out, uh, like us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, Twitter at Inspire Pro Res. Uh, and uh, follow us on Blogspot. The website's coming soon. Uh, we're working on that currently and, de- and getting all that stuff together. I've, took in a, I've taken a bit of a view of the uh, developed website, and it's looking very good. So I'm excited uh, for when that gets released. And yeah, just keep an eye out for everything Inspire Pro because uh, I'm excited to uh, to uh, share Inspire Pro Wrestling with the world. So yeah, definitely check us out. Awesome. And the uh, the next thing I want to talk about is a big tournament that happened this past weekend. If you were in the California area that I mentioned last week on the show, and that's the Battle of Los Angeles for Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. Uh, it's their biggest tournament of the year. A lot of the best talent in the, in the country got to uh, convulge and compete in that tournament. Uh, in the end, Kyle O'Reilly came out the victor, uh, defeating Michael Elgin in the finals, becoming the uh, Battle of Los Angeles 2013 winner. But the big story came uh, what happened after the, the, after the, uh, the win by Kyle O'Reilly, uh, being attacked by his former tag team partner and PWG world champion Adam Cole, as well as the Young Bucks. Uh, sort of mayhem ensued with a lot of the roster, and it ended up that uh, Kevin Steen turned his back on PWG to join with uh, Adam Cole and the Young Bucks, uh, collectively calling themselves the Mount Rushmore of Professional Wrestling, uh, which is the reference uh, that uh, Ciro made earlier in the email. Uh, very interesting. Uh, if you follow PWG, uh, I think Adam Cole and the Young Bucks are sort of my favorite parts of PWG. They're really phenomenal heels. Uh, they, they, they're putting on a lot of great matches, doing a lot of phenomenal stuff. And with Kevin Steen along them, uh, they're, they're, they're going to be an interesting, uh, uh, group. And, uh, I'm, I'm really interested to see, uh, how it goes. They have a promo where Kevin Steen basically explains his actions and it's very interesting, actually, uh, really good developments going over in pro wrestling gorilla. If you want to check them out and, uh, maybe go check out their next event, you can go to pro wrestling gorilla.com. For more information, go buy the DVDs because they're really awesome stuff. And yeah, go check out uh, our friends over in the California area. And the last thing that I want to talk about this week on the show is that Ring of Honor has events coming up this weekend in uh, Chattanooga and Birmingham on the uh, on uh, the sixth and the seventh. Uh, it should be a really fun uh, series of events. Uh, they're a couple weeks away from their finals to their uh, Ring of Honor World Title tournament. Uh, so there definitely will be some developments at those two shows. But the big news is, uh, front of the show, Ray Rowe will actually be competing on both of those events. Uh, he had his uh, sort of tryout, I guess you could say, of sorts at the uh, Ring of Honor show in San Antonio when he wrestled Bobby Fish in what I thought was a phenomenal match. It was definitely one of the best matches of the show. Uh, and it's great to see that Ray Rowe, someone who's extremely talented, uh, is is really, you know, taking a lot of care into his craft, uh, is getting this uh, opportunity again for Ring of Honor because he definitely deserves it. So, yeah, 
Yeah, uh, if you want to go check Ring of Honor out, if you want to go check Ray Rowe out, and if you want to uh, view anything Ring of Honor, you can go to rohwrestling.com. Uh, go watch their uh, TV shows uh, in uh, uh, wherever your CW affiliate is. No, um, not always CW. I thought it was CW. I no, thought, I we talked right about this. It's Sinclair. It's whatever Sinclair is. Okay. It's my Pittsburgh it's, here. It's Fox some places. It depends. CW and You need to go check network. your listings on the website to see where it is. It's all different times. It's I, local I only focus on what's on my TV in San Antonio. Jeez. What? I apologize. But yeah, uh, go check out rhwrestling.com for more information. And that, my friends, is the Indie Minute for this week. Thank you. Something's glitchy. You're glitchy, sir. No, it's on I'm our glitchy. end. No, it's on our end. It's, something's going on with the system over here, so apologize to the video. I will apologize to the <laughs> video people. Um, so, hey, uh, you know, real quick way you can see all the mistakes we make is the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold app on your iOS device, on your i device, on your Android device for, via the Amazon App Store. It's a $1.99 quick way to get through all the extra stuff, all the regular episodes as well in audio format special bonus video of all the stuff before and after between the shows um, and, uh, and all that and a bit more. We're going to uh, uh, also check on in a second a, a little bit of latest from IWC for your video guys and um, but before that here's a little sneak peek what's on this week on Mayhem Gold. A little loud. A little loud guys. Uh, you're a little loud. So loud, Lunchbox, guys. Lunchbox is not going to vote for me because I'm loud tonight. <laughs> no, no, I am not going to vote for Bobby. He's <laughs> really awkward. Ah. <laughs> okay. I'm Papa Lunchbox, and I can see your thoughts. So, like, when I'm pointing at the banner, like this? Yes. It yes. just looks completely weird over there. You look like a crazy person. <laughs> guys what a show caged fury can you believe it all the biggest stars in wrestling and mark madden i'm picking that shit up uh let's change gears here real quick um every now and then here on the show we like to take a trip down memory lane in a little segment that we like to call remember when and i remember when and then i'm back again I can remember when that we did show Sork. Um, this week, uh, there's Sork. There he is, remembering. He's remembering. Look at him go. Uh, this show, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this episode, no, this Raw, God, <laughs> big show, a bitch, uh, as he is wont to do often, surprisingly large amount. Big Show is made to look like a bitch. Um, just terrible, uncomfortable moments, uh, unpleasant things. And uh, this week, I wanna, I wanna take an uncomfortable journey, remembering his worst moments. Um, and I'm gonna start with uh, there was some angle that he was doing with Kurt Angle, uh, where he threw him off of a stage or something or scaffolding somewhere backstage, and they just kind of panned over. And you see uh, uh, Kurt Angle just kind of laying there all twisted in a pool of blood. And it was the worst terrible effect I had ever seen. And he was, big show. just completely ridiculous, awful, overacting, terrible. Uh, Sorg, how about you? Um, I don't think it gets much worse with uh, Big Show than the time 
uh, he had to ride his father's coffin as I think the Big Show, or I'm sorry, Big Boss Man, was uh, dragging it away at the funeral. That was kind of a pretty good what the fuck moment with uh, with with Big Show. That, that was a low point in his life. Yeah, I think that was a low point in all of our lives, to be honest. Yeah. Um, You're a bastard, and your mama just tells you so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seconded <laughs> by like having to sit through the 15 minutes he was crying here in Pittsburgh last year uh, when he got fired before that ironclad contract. So, uh, yeah. The thoughts are ironclad. Ironclad. Eamon, <laughs> what about you? Funny enough, with what Lunchbox mentioned, my remember when also involves Kurt Angle. Uh, I was watching an episode of SmackDown. Now, let's keep in mind, uh, in aiding to this story, uh, my mom does not watch wrestling. However, on this rare episode of SmackDown, for some reason, she's decided to watch it with me. And this was the episode where, uh, I may get this wrong, but I believe Big Show was in a handicap match against Kurt Angle, uh, Luther Reigns, and Mark Jindrax. Uh, and at one point in the match, Kurt Angle, or Big Show has Jindrax and Reigns for a double choke slam. Kurt Angle runs to the outside of the ring, looks underneath the uh, ring apron, and finds uh, a tranquilizing gun. Oh no, I remember this. <laughs> and shoots Big Show in the back with a tranquilizing dart. Like an elephant. Then, Big Show slowly passes out due to being tranquilized, and gets his head shaved. Since this moment, uh, my mom has not forgiven Kurt Angle. <laughs> Uh, she thinks it's deplorable what he did, uh, and yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a moment I can think of where Big Show looks super lame. Uh, Jess, what's your moment? Uh, I've got I've got two in mind. First is when uh, he was barely nudged in the knee with uh, Alberto Del Rio's, Del Rio's car, and he fell to the ground crying for like twenty minutes, like Peter Griffin, just <laughs> holding his knee and, and weeping. Uh, and the second. And I've, I've talked to some people about this, and some remember it, some don't. But there's a time when Big Show was talking to Kai and Tai, and on live TV on Raw, he called them gooks. Whoa! That was a low point. The next week, he tried to say those goofs, like, he tried to play it off, but he, he clearly said a racial slur. Like, just in the heat of, I don't know how to say words, because my mouth is too big. <laughs> oh, wow. At least he didn't say the N-word, right? Um, I, we have yeah. a few. Like Vince McMahon. Yeah, like Vince. Um, <laughs> we have a few from, uh, we put this out as usually on, on, on the Facebook. Uh, Mike, man, Mike seconds the uh, riding his father's casket. Note, this is also possibly his best moment. Um, Antonio Garza, he, <laughs> he points out, and we'll see if we can throw the image. Oh, I can't throw the image up. Hold on. If I can edit this should be able to. No, I can't do that. Uh, he, he can he, describe uh, said image. Garza, Garza puts the image of him getting punched out by Floyd Merriweather. Um, Mayweather? Mayweather? <laughs> Am I doing that wrong? I, I did. Wait, wait. This is the entire, like, three months Floyd, this happened. But did I have Floyd, a problem the entire time? Floyd Twinkle Toes. Floyd t- Twinkle Toes. We'll go with that. We'll definitely go with that. Um, I should be able to bring this up in a second. There's uh, actually a lot of moments that I think about it. I just thought of uh, that time William Regal pissed down Big Show's leg. Oh. Uh, God, there's so there many was, Big Show. Uh, was Vince McMahon up Big Show's ass? Yeah, yeah, with D- DX. Um, there's a picture on here. I really wish I could bring this up. Oh, wait, I can do it over here. I don't know why I'm not doing it this way. Uh, yeah, oh, there we go. There's a picture of him kissing Kane's head. I don't, I, I don't, what in the fuck did this happen? I have no idea. I, I, I don't know if he's kissing friends. his head or he's smelling his non-existent I don't hair. Know what's going on? There you go. There's a bigger version of it. Um, it was on the USA Network, at least. Kane <laughs> um, liked it. Also, worst of all from Garza is Knucklehead. Uh, apparently, that uh, was a good movie. It was actually an all right movie. It, w- it would have been a great like USA movie of the week, to be honest, um, and nothing else, uh, <laughs> really. Uh, so so thanks for that. From the chat room, do we have any uh, at least didn't get knocked out by Lee Merriweather? Uh, true. Going to Royal Rumble, no matter what, even if I have to take the train. Oh, wait, no, that's something else. Um, Bardwire Steel Cage Match. Holy crap, that was bad. I was there for that one, too. We got a lot of Big Show's worst moments here in Pittsburgh, I noticed. Um, so there I you guess go it all there. ties back to Kurt Angle. It does. It's all Kurt Angle's <laughs> fault. Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle. 
Uh, so, and I just want to double check one more if it loads. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, thanks for that, everybody. Uh, yeah, and let us know, uh, hashtag remember when, uh, let us know at Mayhem Show on Twitter or uh, find the stream over at uh, the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show or over on Google Plus as well and tag us, tag us in those posts. Um, so in the meantime, uh, we have some awesome T-shirts. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, uh, Eamon? Yes? Tell me about the T-shirts and I'll be right back. I'm going to tell Sorg, well, not Sorg, but you, the listeners, about these awesome, awesome Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirts that we have over at ProWrestlingTees.com. We have the classic Mayhem Show logo, which you see every which week on this show. Uh, we have the Property of WMS t-shirt, which is a, definitely a very nice one that you can, you know, wear and, you know, show that, you know, we own you as our property. Um, and also... Uh, the very awesome, designed by Alexander Carr's uh, Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com t-shirt. What? Do you is... mean this Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com <laughs> t-shirt? t-shirt? Isn't that amazing? That is pretty amazing. He pulled amazing. that straight out of the internet. Straight out of the internet. Into straight your home. Right here, what? Straight out of where, Sorg? The internet? We're specifically on the internet. On the internet at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS where you can get all your fine Mayhem Show representative threads. Yes, indeed. I'm nodding for you audio people. Um, yeah, this is where you can go that. You can go to ProWrestlingTees.com. Not only can you get this, you can get great stuff. Uh, the jo- Joey Ryan t-shirts. Uh, uh, Kevin Steen. You can get... Uh, just about anybody cool on the indies has a t-shirt at ProWrestlingTees.com. And, and some there, that aren't that cool. And some that aren't that cool. <laughs> <laughs> and other podcasts and promotions it's and actually, stuff so, like that. So but, if you're a wrestler's mom, you know, <laughs> buy your kid's shirt. At least. At least. The moms buy all the DVDs for their kids at the IWC shows. And our moms will hopefully <laughs> buy our t-shirts as well. Look at you, mom. Sorg. Uh, Tron. <laughs> Looking at you. Sorg Atron. Nice <laughs> Sorg Atron. Yes. Um, but no, yo, know, seriously, yo, know, get support the indie guys as well. Uh, there's a new support indie wrestling shirt that was pretty cool from Joey Ryan on his page. Uh, so please you know, check all that out. They're having a lot of Brian uh, Daniel Bryan shirts too, which I don't know if they're they should be doing that. I don't know. I, if that's I, cool. Yeah, those um, are obviously uh Bryanson shirts, Daniel Bryanson. Oh, they're, they're, oh they're Brian, Brian Danielson, Danielson shirts. Oh, yeah. maybe, that, maybe that's where they're getting away, away with it. Maybe. Um, and maybe they can't trademark the, uh, an affirmative answer. And yes. So, but Vince McMahon you know, will sure try. <laughs> exactly. Vince McMahon will sure try. Uh, so with that, yeah, go check out ProWrestlingTees.com. That's T's, T-E-E. <laughs> S. That's <laughs> I thought you were about to say Z as well. Uh, and there's also a banner over on WrestlingMayhemShow.com, so you can check that out as well. So thanks. Go check that out. Support the Mayhem Show. Get yourself some cool threads. They are seriously. These are like kind of. We used to do some show some stuff out of Spreadshirt Cafe Press. Uh, this is definitely so far the best quality stuff I think we've had for shirts. Um, I bought like a Mayhem Show logo shirt uh, just to compare to the old one we got from Spreadshirt, and I really think these are. Are tons better um, if we go through and, and we need to sell we have we, we've met our limit um, of shirts we can post up there for now until we get uh, I think 25 orders um, I think we're probably about probably just under 20 or yeah just under 20 orders away from that if we if we hit that limit we can put as many designs as we want I can bring back the old MWO May, Mayhem World Order logo stuff like that but seriously this stuff this and the property of uh, WMS property of Mayhem great stuff by Alex Garz he's been doing great work for us uh, there and with uh, some of the DVD covers around here um, so go support that uh, he gets a cut off everything too that, anything that's his design uh, so you're not just supporting the Mayhem you're supporting a, a great artist that's uh, doing a lot of great uh, around the wrestling business. He's done a few shirts, uh, some Chikara stuff, uh, 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 the Turtle Wiener. Uh, Steve, Steve the Turtle Wiener. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that's very sorry, I keep fucking up. You know, that's what he gets for, for, for dropping to me at Connect 4. Um, there you go. Uh, what? Wow. What? He did what to you? He dropped to me at, in Connect 4. At the fan clay of the one mm-hmm. Um So with that, uh, and, you know, and he's a great guy. I ran to it at WrestleCon, too. Um, and, and so, hey, now it's time. Mad Mike's not here. But you're still going to get your dose of madness 
uh, as the Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem. And we'll be right back. Greetings, Mayhemers. It's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Okay, so, um, Raw was basically by the number of shit again last night. Um, it started the same way, it ended the same way with the special guest appearance of Paul as the big show. Uh, it's a big week for hearing people's real names. If you heard on um, Impact, you had a dud bomb uh, dropped by Mr. Alan James. Fucking ridiculous. AJ Styles thinking that he's cutting a shoot promo when in fact he's just like he didn't go off on anyone. And he could have. His career has been shit the past couple of years. But um yeah, I didn't really like Impact much, especially like the matches were good. As we said in the hangout, the matches were good. But my god, I don't know what the fuck happened with Hulk Hogan at the end. He flubbed like eight or nine different things. The Bound for Glory series has been cut short because TNA can't plan anything three months past their face. And, well, I read the spoilers for next week, but if you watched Impact and you can you, can, you listen to our hangout, pretty much we nailed it on point. Um, oh, also, Sorg, I am only one or two steps away from getting Squirrel Girl. People who don't know that need to join the hangouts on Monday nights. And also, uh, football. Is this weekend fancy? Football starts this weekend, so you'll probably be hearing me brag when I start dominating motherfuckers. All right, well, uh, this has been the minute. Peace, bitches. Thanks, Mad Mike, for that minute of mayhem. Uh, but of course, as usual, there's a disagreement between the man in the Bronx and the boy in San Antonio. Uh, Eamon, you uh, disagreed with a little bit he had to say here. That was usual. I just think Mad Mike's wrong in this case. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. that's the usual. That, you know, that's pretty much on point. I, I don't agree that's with the, by the thing by numbers stuff. part. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with the by-the-numbers stuff. I think Raw has been very interesting as of late. I mean, even if they've done some things that are similar from week to week, it's because they're building to something. Yeah, That's the whole reason why you do something repeatedly, you know? And it, it's not like they're doing things exactly repeatedly. Like, you know, there's little aspects that are, you know, they're changing here and there, and that's what's making it complex, you know? And they're, mm-hmm. they're utilizing characters beyond just Daniel Bryan in this, which yeah. I think is interesting. And it's, it, it, it brings that point home. It needs to be not just picking on Daniel Bryan, right? It needs to be, no, we're picking on a few different people. And this whole, like, you said something, so we're going to mess with you thing, um, I think it's kind of interesting. I mean, I mean it's pretty typical. Um, and I don't think you did a lot of really crazy new things. Because, again, it was Labor Day. You're probably not going to get a good rating in general because it was, you know, a holiday. They usually kind of do go into an autopilot-ish mode. Um, but I think it was just fine for that, you know? I, it was a good Raw. It was an entertaining Raw. They had some decent stuff there. It's not going to be a memorable Raw, but, hey, sure, another week. I think it had its memorable moments, and I think it had its really good moments. For yeah. example... Crying uh, Big Show. The, I'm sorry? Crying Big Show that we had a whole segment about. Well, Brian Big Show. But, I mean, and, and we talked about Big Show when we talked about how he likes to cry and all that stuff. But look at the acting. I don't think Big Show's the worst actor. I don't think he's necessarily that good, but I don't think he's no. the worst. Um, look at the acting ability of Big Show, though, and compare that to the acting ability of Cody Rhodes last night, mm-hmm. which was yeah. phenomenal. Like, that promo afterwards was just um, perfect, I think, because it made me intrigued in the story. I believed everything that he was saying. Like you know, and both because of the way he portrayed it, but because there's a lot of truth to what he was saying. Yeah, he he brought up the polka dots with Dusty Rhodes. He brought up the Gold Dust character, which I mean, like, I think that was D- Dustin's character, though. I think that was D- a lot of Dustin's idea. Well, he was the well, he was the natural before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's you know he was sort of he was sort of the, like a Cody Rhodes of that era, you know, sort of very young and up and coming, and then they kind of made him into like this comic character that was like, uh, you know, uh, homosexual like deviant yeah i and really i don't think and and cody i'm glad they really didn't make cody like dusty jr or anything like that like dustin was really 
uh, when he was coming up, um, especially in WCW days. Uh, Cody really, he, he was something different, you know. It, it may be a little generic at the beginning, you know, weird skinny guy. Um, didn't he team with Bob Holly for a while? He did team with yeah. Bob Holly. Um, you know, stuff like that. But still, it wasn't, it was still kind of his own path. You know? But I think I think you can compare Cody's uh, path to a lot like Daniel Bryan's. I know Cody wasn't that indie darling necessarily, but Cody's that guy that we look at nowadays and say, "Oh, Cody Rhodes can put on a really good match, yeah. but he's not going to be the oh, top sure. guy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you got any words on that, Jessica? I just just agreeing that you know with everything Cody was doing last night. I mean, well, everything Cody's been doing for a while has, has been pretty good, but. Yeah, I mean, what what he added on his segments was was really good, and it was a new wrinkle to to the whole, you know, uh, McMahon and, and Helmsley are, are screwing with everybody, you know, and it's like, for, for for a while it, was, it seemed like okay, the consequences are pretty big for Daniel Bryan, but everyone else, okay, you're just going to get a beat down, like, but now that Cody's gone, now it's you know everyone's on on alert, like you literally can't say anything out of turn against them. Yeah, yeah. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it's like, it is bullying. It is like full bullying at this point, uh, which really, they really need to join up with Ryback, right? Like, I, yeah. I, I want to see them kind of like running to Ryback and them saying like, I like your style, you know? Um, I think he'd be a good enforcer for this new corporation, you know? Um, I, I was saying... I think I was saying in the wrap up, I would like to see this continue instead of Big Show just going away or something. Like the way he was kind of led to the back there, I would like him to be kind of the um, um, how do I want to put this? The uh, 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 forced enforcer for them, you know, like 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 yeah. a big or Triple H's personal bodyguard that like looks at him and gives him a look, and I don't want to do that thing and just punches somebody out because he's told to. You know, um, I think they could do like almost becoming like his Virgil for a bit. Yeah. You know, uh, he's trying to talk, you know, Daniel Bryan out of, you know, going after Triple H. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. There's so many interesting ways you could do with this and and, and, and do this corporate angle uh, with, you know, spin on its ear a little bit. I mean, you got to think when we look back at the original corporation, there's a lot of comedy stuff in there. We had like, you know, we had Briscoe and Patterson uh, being goofballs and being the Stooges. They were called the Stooges. We had the Mean Street Posse as the enforcers, right? How could we believe that, you know? Now we have the Shield, who has been destroying people more or less for almost a year. Have all the belts. Um, I I think it's a testament to the era. I think in the Attitude Era, you could get more of that comedy stuff and get away with it. I think nowadays people expect, you know, the Shield to be these, you know, these bodyguards, these guys that, you know, when when Triple H sends them to do a job, they do it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what do you think, LB? Um, I, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think um, I, I, I would love to see Big Show in that kind of reluctant uh bodyguard kind of thing i think that's a great idea and it's not something that we've seen a million times which is good Mm -hmm. uh wrestling revolution in the chat is saying but uh that would kind of kill shield in the sense that they're the ones taking out people would it really because i think it makes them look stronger they're the ones that you sick on people you know and there's a lot of three-on-one situations yes but it's still them doing uh, I, I think it's what they were doing before, but now with a purpose, you know, because there was never that, really an explicit purpose to most of what happened for the first six months of what they did. I think he's saying that if you put Big Show as the enforcer, it's going to take the, take away okay, from the Shield's role. Shield. But I don't think there can be a. I, I think um, they they're the enforcers as far as getting things done. Big Show's the protection. Is kind of where I'm coming from there. Yeah, you know, I can see that. Um, or the final, because I mean, even last night we had the shield do the beat down and the and the and the uh, power bombs and stuff. But then, like the exclamation point is that punch. Yeah, because it still looks more vicious than anything those three do to people, right? Because you know yeah. it's the big, it's a giant watermelon hitting somebody. And that's a, it's a yeah, it's a fist the size of you know his head. 
Yeah, it looks like, and he gets that smack, and I don't know how he does that without killing somebody. You know, Seekers Pro Wrestling, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but it's it, it looks good. It looks real when he does it on, on TV to, to the rest of us normals, you know. Um, so, yeah, I love it. I love it. So, uh, uh, talking about uh, enforcing on uh, on on raw last night uh how about enforcing twitter and making sure it works before it comes on tv huh i mean, well, oh, I, I, I didn't know that oh i have nobody here wait jessica were you in the hangout when we were investigating yeah this? I, I saw it so we um, saw this I, I, mean, I think most people saw this uh we we got our twitter streams and we've had some weird crap come from it in the past right uh, but this one came up last night and, and this is i you know not to make fun of their technology or whatever uh so this was one at Liz uh, Maria Diaz, our new uh, uh, favorite person on Twitter, by the way. Uh, and she says, what, WWE, you fucked up my tweet. And you see there's her Twitter there at the bottom. And you see the start of some gobbledygook that happened. If you look at her tweet um, that she actually sent, um, there were a lot of uh, kind of crying sad faces, like um, emoji, basically. You're familiar if you're on uh, smartphones. Um the problem with emoji is they work a certain way. Like, say, if you're on iPhone and iOS devices. But, like, I know for me, I pulled up the Android device, and they looked completely different than my iPhone and everything. Uh, apparently, whatever system they're using, and the same thing when I have stuff like that come up on my Google Glass, it's all gobbledygook, too. Uh, apparently, it had a big problem with it when they plugged it into whatever software runs that stream through TV. Uh, but for a bit, uh, it was kind of funny because she definitely became one of the more popular people on Twitter. Um, yeah, I mean, but they just need someone to monitor it because it was a couple pay-per-views ago. The Bellas tweeted, you know, I think someone said it was cat typing. And it, it got on the stream, you know, just because it was from at, you know, Nikki and, and Brie. Mm -hmm. like, no one's really checking to see what's going up. There's like, oh, here's a, here's someone, you know, that's verified WWE superstar. So we just do it. Here's someone with a hashtag raw. Let's throw it up. I, I, this guy be like said they threw some uh, irresponsible intern in on this. Like, I remember, mm -hmm. remember when we, this first started and we said, well, yeah, man, somebody has to go through all those touts and Pick three of them. Somebody has to go through all these tweets and put some up there. I don't know what their selection process is for this. As a tweet, like, it was kind of nice. She says, you know, something about, I think, Cody Rhodes and, and you know, a bunch of crying emoji, you know? I, it's, yeah. Okay, that's a great fan response, right? Put that up there. Um, but something failed as far as that goes. The guy that had, like, what did the, that guy want to have, like, a, the 911 Towers or something as his background? And he said something yeah. uh, uh, slightly racist, I think it was. Um, yeah, there, there's, can I, yeah, go ahead. I was just saying, can we just pretend like Kurt Hawkins and JTG are like responsible for this? And like, that's what they're, <laughs> they've been doing for the past, you know, six years. Good. Like I they're responsible. Hey, a lot of you still getting the WWE paycheck, right? Yeah. So, um, but I, I mean, this kind of shows the, um, this kind of shows like kind of the problem with the social media thing and make sure they're doing right. And man, uh, WWE has done it right for so long. Um, uh, better than most, I think, especially for something yeah. on a scale and doing it week after week and doing it something live and with how many personalities and just saying here, be on Twitter. How many people they say are on stage? 40 wrestlers. So there's 40 public figures. That 40 are on wrestlers Twitter. and two total divas. They're <laughs> 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 you broke me. You broke me. Uh, so there's 42 people. <laughs> Of varying statures, <laughs> and then some um, that are on Twitter. That I hope somebody's policing. You know, um, forty-two plus people that can fuck it up on Twitter for your personal brand. You know, um, yeah. I mean, Michael Cole didn't he say something about uh, you know uh, inflammatory words towards gay people a few months yeah, ago that Matthews. was an well, that, accidental was, dm or something um that was a while back to josh Matthews. that could have yeah. been a huge yeah. problem what if that happened now with the darren young situation yeah they'd be I mean, a huge problem that'd be all over the news probably yeah, you know, way more so than it was back then um you had you had uh, uh tensai calling his little man servant that this manager guy you know uh saying what he had chink eyes or something um, it, it's, it, there's a lot of ways it could go bad, what, especially with, we talked about uh, the weird wrestling personalities, what it takes to be a pro wrestler, um, and then you give them, um, a chance to be a pipe bomb. Not everybody can be innocently, uh, uh, funny like Biggie Langston. 
Oh, Biggie Langston. Right? <laughs> Which, if you're not following uh, him, you should definitely follow him, by the way. Um, but other than that, I mean, if we were to grade social media so far uh, for these guys, um, you know, what what would you grade these guys as? I would give them an A-, minus, and that's that's high regards for me. What about you, LB? B+. B+. Plus? B+. Plus. A, sol- a solid B+. Plus? Solid, solid B+. Plus. <laughs> what about you, Eamon? I can agree with LB. I'll give him a B plus. A bit of a uh, bit of kinks that I think need to be worked out. Maybe some things they should probably change. But other than that, I mean, I don't I don't find it as offensive as it used to be. Yeah. So that's always a good thing. Yeah, it's not it's not in your face. It's more the app. It's replaced with the app, right? Yeah, the app is. Yeah. Mm, I don't and know. It, it still doesn't work on my Android device, by the way. It, 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 crashes, no, it doesn't work it on mine either. It's out on my iPad one, but again, it's an older operating system. Um, and I'm usually occupied with my phone with you guys with the Hangout or something, so I don't, I don't really bring it up a lot. So I mean, I used to I mean, love last it. Last night they, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I say I used to love it before it popped up all those videos all the time. What were you saying? I was just saying last night they showed that you know you don't really need the app because like they would come back from a commercial like here's what happened on the app and yeah. show it on TV. And to be honest, now that I know that so. Matt Stryker isn't back in there uh, with William Regal making crap up, I don't, I'm not even interested in it anymore because that was the most entertaining thing they did was when they were like, Matt, do something, you know, because um, they have these QAs like sometimes off of Twitter and they were the most ridiculous things you heard. I, I hope somebody let me know. Is it, are they on YouTube? Like some of the better uh, Matt Stryker uh, uh, uh app wb app stuff because that, that would be worth watching like especially his stuff with william regal was just hilarious um excellent hey can i tell you guys about a new show i've been watching yes sure because <laughs> i need permission for this um <laughs> it's it's your show i'm just hosting it for you um so I, I i came across this what did i i think it was retweeted it was an eli roth tweet it says he went to high school with this guy um, but it was retweeted by Chris Jericho because Chris Jericho is in it. Uh, LB, I think um, for some reason, I think this is something you'd be into. Uh, John Davis gets a sex robot. <laughs> it's as awesome as, I don't, I, should, I don't know if I should be flattered by that or insulted. <laughs> yes. Um, see, it's what you call John Davis gets a sex robot robot. He has a perfectly capable <laughs> girlfriend. Um, it goes along the, you know, the, the list you have often with your significant other, the, if you had a chance, you would. And this is like, well, what if they had a sex robot? Not that they ever will. And she says, yes. And then it turns out they're sex robots. And Chris Jericho is the perverse friend that, uh, tries to get in the sex robot's pants before he, he before John Davis does. So, um, I recommend it. It's only six episodes, shorter episodes. I think they're like around, uh, five to 10 minutes each. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're a little over five minutes, around five minutes each. Um, so go look that up on YouTube. It, it's a good, if you like the humor on this show, you'll love this one even better because they're actually good at it. Um, so go check Thanks. that out. Thanks, bro. What? <laughs> I mean, collectively on average, you you bring the average up. You and Bobby. I mean, I'm, I'm all, all on top of flattering tonight. <laughs> um... <laughs> All right, uh, so we're going to th- – what's, what's that? I was just saying I think that means uh, Sork thinks Eamon sucks at comedy. <laughs> there you go. By process yeah. of elimination. Sad face. Also, I'm, I'm, it's driving me nuts because if you haven't known, I'm having some glitches over here, and I'm trying to work through that. Um, all right, so we're going to – since I'm doing so well with technology, it's good to experiment with something new at this point, right? Ha-ha! <laughs> so, whoops, that's not the thing I wanted to do. Uh, so, no, we would want to do more and more with uh, Google Hang. We've done this a couple of times, but, you know, with uh, varying results, I kind of wanted to bring the idea back, see if uh, the technology we have here in the studio is kind of uh, ready to do that, you know, to, to bring this back. Uh, so over here uh, on, on the computer, we got Jessica coming at us from, I uh, invited in... Uh, anybody who wanted in from the chat, and if anybody else wants to, um, I, you, some of you guys, you may have to, uh, if, if you've been with us on the Hangouts, I should have you in my list. Let me know if you want in on the chat. Uh, but we're going to do a little more roundtable kind of thing and see what you guys uh, want to talk about. Any, any ideas you have, any comments you guys have 
uh, from stuff we talked about on the show. I'm going to go kind of round table here. Um, so, uh, you know, guys, kind of wait your turn on this until we come to you. Um, so Bobby F. J-Town joins us. Hey, Bobby. Hey, how's it going? Hey, uh, so uh, you've been hey. listening all night. Uh, you got any thoughts on Raw, wrestling, anything we talked about earlier in the night uh, that you want to chime in on? Big just little Andy Levine's gimmick. <laughs> Quiet rage. Quiet rage. He's more of a whimperer, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. What happened to the, the tough big show that we used to know? He comes and goes, doesn't he? Because they really, yeah, got really it whenever, gets really boring. Whenever, when he's a face, he cries. Well, you gotta think about it. this. Is a big guy. What ha- the big the big monsters have the worst records, right? Because mm-hmm. they're the guys. I'm this Undertaker. Because they're the guys that have to be conquered, right? Yeah. So except it, for Cully. So either he's destroying people, and then he gets like you know Daniel Bryan or, or Floyd Mayweather, um, yay, and, <laughs> and whoever else needs to climb the mountain that is Big Show to punch him out uh, and defeat him, right? Yeah, so, I want to see Big Show versus Catwoman. So <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Lee Merriweather. Oh jeez. Um, <laughs> Oh, jeez. Where's Corbin? Comments, am I right? Completely derailed sword. I have no idea. Um, um, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> but now, he, like, they have to cut him down so he can snap and become a monster mm-hmm. again, right? Yeah. And, and they find that weakness. You know, you gotta find a bigger weakness for the bigger guy. So. True, true. That's why I'm so excited for, uh, for Kane. Pertain to, you know, whenever they reveal whatever they've been, uh, the Wyatt family's been doing to him. I think it's going to be good. Exactly. Wheels is on with us. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Excellent. Uh, so you have any thoughts or comments from tonight? Uh, honestly, uh, just thinking about the big show and where it could turn. Where I, I said this last night in the wrap where this could all go would be great, but we all know WWE doesn't think like us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, good, good. Uh, and, and Riz is with us as well. Uh, you have any thoughts, sir? Maybe he's with us? Check your music. Riz, wake up. Check your audio. Wait a minute. There we are. Live show. <laughs> Live recording, you guys. Mean just now, Sorg. What's that? I was not muted until you called on me. <laughs> Funny how that works. What the hell? Hey, nice shirt, but by anyway, the way. Nice shirt, by oh, the way. Oh, you mean this property of it's WMS a nice shirt? property of Mayhem shirt you're wearing there. I can only see the top of it here. but uh, Oh, oh, you, you, want, you want a little there low? There it is. There it is. Whoa. How about a lower? Maybe a little oh, lower. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. Riz, you have any, you have any comments from you have any comments from anything we've been talking about tonight or anything about um, wrestling or Raw? Fuck TNA. Oh, yeah, hey, no, yeah, I got a question for you. Are you going to finally partake Me? in some NXT now it's free on Hulu? Yes, Riz, are you? <laughs> I might. You have less, less excuses than before. Yeah, I might. Because it's be legal fair. now. It's legal it, now. It, exactly. Bargain. What's that, LB? WrestleFan did hold up his end of the bargain. He did? You watched the he Arrested did. Development? I did. But, I it, but, the, development. The, but the bargain was for you to watch TNA. Or NXT. <laughs> I did watch NXT. You did watch NXT. And it took yeah. WrestleFan three months to hold up his end of the bargain. Right, and he got. And now that he's held up his end, I can watch NXT again. Yes, and without paying for Hulu Plus. And yeah, I will. I will start watching NXT now. Good. Same here. I'll I'll watch some NXT. Uh, So WrestleFan can now shut his mouth about it. (laughs) And everybody else who thinks I just watched WWE. It is WWE. Yeah, it is WWE. It's like WWE, but it's indie. It's like the best of both worlds. It's like mm-hmm. it's like it's like talent purgatory. <laughs> talent that purgatory. Is that a bad so is TNA hell? Yeah, pretty much. Right? Say, pretty it's, much yeah. it, it, it's like the so, outpost for wayward souls. <laughs> good point. Uh, but yeah, other than that, the show crying is pretty much 
the mo- best thing we saw this week mm-hmm. besides, you know, uh, Liz shitting the bed. <laughs> what? I'm calling her Liz, what? by the way. Who? The oh, the the, 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 the oh, Liz! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah! Our new friend Liz from from Twitter. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, and, by the way, I, you should, I, I feel bad because she tweeted a friend and said, uh, "Everybody's making fun of my tweet on Raw." Sad face again using her emoticons. They got got her in trouble in the first place. Um, these kids with their emoticons. Um, and uh, it, it would say, no, we're kind of making fun of WWE for this and, and trying to put you over, actually. At least you're I, just in the line of fire. Yeah, it's like you're just going to get both you're sides. Just a, you're just yeah. an innocent bystander in all this. Yeah, exactly. WWE is the main target here. Yeah, yeah. You're just getting shot at. <laughs> Duck and exactly. cover. Duck and cover, exactly. Um, excellent. All right. Uh, with that, hey, we got all of you guys here. I think it was a nice group to learn. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, let's go with you, old man, LB. Um, I learned that uh, while Stephanie McMahon thinks that there's no roles in Hollywood for big men and giants and stuff, I think Big Show has done more acting outside of WWE films than any other current WWE superstar. I think that's true. Captain Insano. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yes. Stephanie doesn't know dick about Hollywood. That's what I learned. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of that was colored one way or another. And I'm still wrapping my head around a big show investing in a strip mall. (laughs) Yeah. Anybody else stuck on that point like I am? Because that was just like, strip mall? The strip mall closed. I mean, I feel like like, that's a bad... Emporium is no more. Wasn't this like an angle from like next Friday or something? You you think you don't like a, a series of big lots if anything? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> it was the big lots. <laughs> there you go. You be the oh. built in uh, uh, mascot or yeah spokesman. Uh, big lots, the only place I can shop, um, I, or something. I don't know. All shops. What's that? <laughs> I said that are the big and tall shops. <laughs> hey, there you go. There you go. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Damon, what about you? What did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned from wrestling this week that more wrestlers need to come out to new kids on the block and wear fanny packs. What's up, Jojo Bravo? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We're going to go over to the Hangout. Uh, Bobby of J-Town, what did you learn? I learned two things this week. Um one, John Cena went purse shopping this week on uh, Total Divas. Oh, I didn't watch this yet. And nobody talked about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I missed Total Divas, so I, I didn't throw it No, when, when you have drunk Bellas, you kind of miss a lot. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And the second thing I learned, um, Shane McMahon stepped down as CEO of his company that you on direct. So could we be seeing Shane coming back, maybe? Mm, I don't know. I don't Possibly. know. Possibly. I wonder what his deal was that he that he has said I'm going to be a part of, of, away from this company, you know. <laughs> like what happened there, you know? I I think here comes the money. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. I so. hope here we go. Let's Maybe. hope so. Wheels, yep. what'd you learn from wrestling? What did I learn from wrestling? I learned that Big Show's next match will be against Squirrel Girl. Ah. And <laughs> uh, no, all kidding aside, uh, I actually honestly learned that. Even though the shield may be the bit mean street posse now, they're better than the mean street posse. You shut your mouth. I don't no, 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 no. I Riz, I'm sorry. How, they how are better dare, than the how how dare you yeah. insult Pete Gas? Pete Gas is my spirit animal. Dean Ambrose cannot <laughs> rock a sweater vest the way I, anyone in the mean street posse could. Yeah. I, okay, okay, I have to agree with that one. Tactical sweater vest. <laughs> Jessica, what you I'm learn? I'm never ever looking uh, a guy seriously when his name is Pete Gas. <laughs> <laughs> you take that the most serious. <laughs> Means go, man. More serious than Joey Abs. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I'd rather look at Abs than Gas. <laughs> That's your personal <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> please tell us what you learned. Uh, I, I learned that uh, Bree mode is. The equivalent of Ninja Stealth, um, <laughs> because obviously Daniel Bryan would never know she was drunk. Uh, she knocked on the door. 
<laughs> it's like I'm gonna be all stealthy. Knock, knock, knock. And I learned you don't know. You don't want to know what Nikki Bella keeps in her travel bag. Hmm. Maybe it's a flashlight. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty that's, much. That's basically what happened on Total Divas. You know how women operate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Riz, what you learned from wrestling? I learned uh, JoJo is wrestle fan's age. It's a wrestle fan. No wrestle fan. Get that I cookie. Would I, I, get that cookie. I, I get, wouldn't touch that with a nine inch pole. Get that fetal oh, cookie. <laughs> Did I see? Wait, am I seeing this right? Is it somebody put a uh, picture of a uh, Tyler Black? I'm sorry, Seth Rollins in a hot yeah. dog outfit. Yeah, that's a that's a Halloween costume. Uh, uh, hot dog. Oh, oh hot dog. Right. What's Hotel. Up, and uh, there's the picture for our show graphic tonight. Um, do do do. <laughs> I learned that uh, uh, I am amazed that I didn't hear about last night being high drama in WWE because it kind of was. No, right, it's coming. It? I mean, wasn't it? Wasn't it? that was a long story? It was. It was. I, you guys, you guys were kind of on the, for that uh, Paul Heyman CM Punk thing, like kind of playing too long last week. I think like the end part there kind of played too long, but hey, it was it was fine enough. Um, and and we learned that uh, step was the Stephanie. Wait, big, okay. Uh, Big Show was Stephanie's giant, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when she was a kid, um, there was a lot of there was a lot of miscommunication. Between there was a lot of com- there night. was a lot of rewriting of history there. Because, there's a lot of retconning happening here. When when she, she was twelve, it was in the eighties. Yes, <laughs> and also Big Show never helped her. <laughs> Ever and we don't know if, like, in the back they were friends or whatever. You know, whatever happens back then. We don't you know. know. I mean, it's not based she, on what we she saw. She thought he's the guy from the green bean cans. Yeah, there you go. Or she completely doesn't know who Andre the Giant is, right? No, yeah, that's true. Point. So, all right, guys. Thanks. I yeah, we get a little bit of experiment here. You guys enjoy this uh, hopping in at the uh, at the end mm-hmm. from the peanut gallery yeah, here. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so. This is a thing that's happening. All right. So uh, they're going to cry us off. It's a wrestling mayhem show, wrestling mayhem show.com. I tell Stitcher and YouTube. Drop us a line at the email address. Oh, wait. What's that email address right here on the shirt? Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can join the conversation on Facebook, Google Plus, at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Let us know your room. Remember when about crying big show. Uh, hashtag remember when. Check out. Uh, let us know. If there's any indies we're missing, let us know on Twitter as well. Uh, so yes. Amy can talk about them at length in the any minute uh, and all that kind of stuff. I'm Sorg for everybody, the entire Mayhem crew here, and all of you guys at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Everybody on. We'll see you guys next week. Mayhem out.